Dear students, in this lecture, we are going to see an important enzyme that is involved there in the DNA replication. This is a prime enzyme that plays a major role there on the DNA replication. So, this is called as a DNA polymerase. This enzyme catalyzes addition of deoxy nucleotide by condensing the DNT piece with an elimination of pyrophosphate. So, this enzyme mainly adds a nucleotide only to the 3 dash OH end of the RNA primer or to a already pre existing strand of DNA. And this enzyme does not have an ability to add a new nucleotide there to the 5 dash end. So, this is the reason why one strand will be synthesized so fast that is called as a leading strand. And there is an another strand called as a lagging strand is also synthesized there during a DNA replication. While synthesizing the lagging strand, several RNA primers need to be synthesized that is with the help of the DNA primase enzyme. Thus, the RNA primers formed were having a free 3 dash OH end to which the new nucleotides will be added by the DNA polymerase, especially the polymerase 1 enzyme. Now, you can look at there in the right hand side diagram that depicts how this process has been taking place. So, DNA polymerase adds nucleotides there in a 5 dash to 3 dash direction. That is the newly growing strand will be added in 5 dash to 3 dash direction by using the 3 dash to 5 dash template strand. The enzyme is very specific and it can be able to add only nucleotide to the 3 dash OH end and not to the 5 dash end. So, first a primer is synthesized with the help of the DNA primase enzyme that RNA primer will be synthesized which serve as a place in which further nucleotides will be added. So, the nucleotides will be freely present there in the cytoplasm they will be added there to the growing chain based on the complementary base pairing principle. What is complementary base pairing principle? In a parental strand, if A is present as a nucleotide, that is as a nitrogenous base, then here T will be added. So, that is a meaning for a complementary base pairing principle. So, thus the DNA polymerase adds the nucleotides using the original strand as a template during this particular process. We look at the other point, the order in which the nucleotides are added are dictated upon the nucleotide sequence of the template strand of the DNA. That is a point I have explained based on the base pair rules. It is also referred as a processive enzyme. That is DNA polymerase is referred as a processive enzyme since it binds to the macromolecular substrate. Here it includes DNA or nucleic acid which serves as a macromolecular substrate it will be attached to them and then moves along this macromolecular substrate. While it is moving, it will start its function that is the adding of the nucleotides. So, because of this reason, DNA polymerase was referred as a processive enzyme. Next, we look at into the details of the polymerases. Basically, differences were existing between the prokaryotic DNA polymerases and eukaryotic DNA polymerases. In prokaryotes, in total, five different forms of polymerases were existing. However, if you look at into the eukaryotic DNA polymerases, it will be having the following things that is alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon type of polymerases. However, in our course, we are going to look at mainly points related to prokaryotic polymerases. Even though five different types of polymerases exist, three polymerases play a major role there in the replication of chromosomal DNA there in the bacteria. All these three polymerases found to have a polymerase as well as exonuclease activity. Exonuclease activity could be best explained in this diagram. You look at the topmost image which shows the polymerase activity of the DNA polymerase enzyme. But when it is taking up the polymerase activity, a wrong base has been added there. You look at that, it is actually for C, it has to add only a G there. However, 
it has been added with a so a is a wrong base that have been added in that location this a base need to be removed by the enzyme through exonuclease activity exonuclease refers to outermost thing has been removed by certain kind of a nucleus activity here in the second image a 3 to 5 exonuclease activity is carried out by the same polymerase enzyme in order to remove the incorrect base that is a that has been added there now again you look at into the third diagram that incorrect base has been removed and a correct base g has been added there so this is the way in which an enzyme will be performing simultaneously a polymerase as well as exonuclease activity there in the cell system during the course of the replication process. Thus all the polymerases can remove nucleotides sequentially from the 3 dash end of the strand and polymerase 1 and 3 can also able to cleave the nucleotides that is some wrong nucleotide that have been added there from the 5 dash end of the strand. Next, we look at the points related to polymerase 1. It is also referred as a Kornberg enzyme. Kornberg is a scientist who has first discovered this particular enzyme. So, it is referred as a Kornberg enzyme. It is active in DNA repair. It is also involved in the removal of RNA primers during the process of DNA replication. And it is also essentially needed for the replication of certain plasmid. That is apart from chromosome for plasmid replication also this particular enzyme is essential. It has both 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease that is proofreading activity and 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease activity. This 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease refers to RNA primer removal and they can able to perform 5 dash to 3 dash polymerase activity in the lagging strand that is generally requiring a free 3 dash processing RNA primer and a template strand for their activity. Next, we look at what is happening to the DNA polymerase 1 enzyme when it is subjected for a proteolytic cleavage treatment. This enzyme is extracted from E. coli and it is subjected for treatment with subtilisin. Subtilisin is an antibiotic produced from bacillus subtilis. It results in the formation of two fragments. You can look at the DNA polymerase holo enzyme. So, this is an enzyme which possesses a 5 to 3 polymerase activity and then 3 to 5 exonuclease as well as 5 to 3 exonuclease activity. When it is subjected for a proteolytic cleavage, it forms into two fragments. One is the clino fragment, which is referred as a large fragment, which retains 5 to 3 polymerase activity as well as 3 to 5 exonucleates activity. This particular fragment is having a lot of application there in the field of genetic engineering especially in various DNA sequencing methods, this enzyme which possesses a polymerase and 3 to 5 exonuclease activity is more useful. You look at this image, this is the one which shows the various steps that have been involved in a sequencing process, in a next generation sequencing. So, in this kind of next generation sequencing, in order to amplify the single standard DNA molecule, Clino fragment enzymes are having a lot of applications there. DNA polymerase 2 is the next enzyme. It is mainly involved in repair of damaged DNA and it also has a 3 to 5 exonuclease activity. The top side diagram explains about how an exonuclease activity is carried out by an enzyme. The next one is polymerase 3. Polymerase 3 is an important enzyme there with reference to DNA replication or it is referred as a main replicative processive polymerase commonly present in the bacteria. They are involved in elongation of the DNA molecule during the course of replication. It also possesses a 3 to 5 exonuclease proofreading ability apart from the polymerase activity. This enzyme was used in amplification of nucleic acids in the PCR. That is, when artificially this enzyme has been separated, it can be used for PCR that is polymerase chain reaction amplification purposes. Even for the uh, COVID virus detection, when they are going for a RT-PCR based test, they will go for using this particular polymerase only. This polymerase is obtained commercially from an organism called as a thermus aquaticus 
and the name of the polymerase is the one that have been given here tag dna polymerase here t stands for thermus and aq stands for aquaticus so a dna polymerase obtained from thermus aquaticus it is commonly used in the pcr re reactions for the purpose of dna amplification this tag polymerase was actually discovered by a scientist named thomas brock so he is a person who has identified this organism that is a thermophilic bacteria from yellowstone national park in the year 1966 and eventually this particular thermus aquaticus based polymerase was used commercially there in the pcr reactions even tag polymerase have certain other forms that are more effective such as a stoffel fragment actually stoffel fragment is a modified recombinant form of tag polymerase that is a c terminal region of that particular protein has been modified which is more thermostable than the parent enzyme that also has a polymerase activity but lacks both the forms of exonuclease activity that is it don't have a 3 dash to 5 dash and 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease activity it is purely found to possess only the polymerase activity that is the reason it has been has a lot of application there in the field of genetic engineering